US Embassy. We've got detailed plans for a linear park running through the spine of the Nine Elms in place. And even if you go to the Nine Elms today, you will see diggers in the ground in parts of the borough, and you will also see marketing placards up. There is real momentum there. We have an investment team in place. We have the government now, even just last week, signalling support for a Northern Iron extension. We're not there yet. I think there are tough times ahead. There's lots of challenges still for us. But the point I would make is this. We have a bold vision. If we push that bold vision, things will happen. And I hope in the discussion we have over the next five, ten minutes, all members will recognise the importance of this project, what it can do for Wandsworth, what it can do for London, but also what it can do for the UK economy. That's what I think is at stake here tonight. That's what is at stake at the Nine Elms. I look forward to the debate. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Clough. Councillor Belton. Madam Mayor, just to say that the actual debate is about this place, Tideway Industrial Estate, um, and we'll be voting against because there's not enough affordable housing and it's not de designed for the residents of Wandsworth. So we're actually voting against that, which makes it a bit peculiar because obviously the majority party want a debate about the whole area. Now I'm not going to talk about this at all, but the whole area where there might be a level of agreement. Um, there might be a level of agreement, but different levels of enthusiasm or scepticism. We're promised 16,000 new homes, 25,000 jobs. How could we possibly be against? What indeed is there to be against? Well, of course, one of the slight problems is that Councillor Cuff um, nice and blandly puts it that way, but he is completely wrong. Five years ago, ten years ago, we were saying this time without number. How many times have I personally been involved in a planning application committee where we've passed permission for goodness knows how many thousands of homes in Nine Elms? At literally, literally every decade of the last three or four. Um, so, for instance, in 1988, Mrs. Thatcher was here with John Broom with a spectacular opening of the Battersea. Um, in, 19, in 2001, there was something else, I've forgotten what. There have been about three or four major applications covering the biggest site, and not one of them has come to fruition. Now, Councillor Cuff mentioned three, favor three particular things, a favourable economic climate. I hate to say this, but uh, that's not what we've got. If it wasn't for the Olympics, um, I mean, we're possibly in double-dip recession anyway. I mean, I think I'm going to be proved right on that. Some people on your side think I've been pessimistic about that. But, I think I but if it wasn't for the Olympics, we almost certainly would be. Uh, and the Olympics and public sector infrastructure investment in the eastern half of the megalopolis of this country is what's keeping the economy going here. And it isn't going to last much longer, as we know. Uh, nine, what is it, nine months, ten months, or something like that. What happens to the economy there? Do we have a favourable eco economy? economy? Forget whether it's the last Labour government, which of course it was not, and you can't stick to that story much longer with the whole of the world in the economic crisis. Um, but we, none of us expect a period of wonderful growth in the next few years. So what makes us think that it's going to be different in Nine Elms? I'm much more sceptical than that. Funnily enough, the majority party, I thought it was Christmas, the majority party decided to, to centre on this debate 24 hours after Treasury holdings were declared bankrupt. Now, that's 24 hours after George Osborne said he'd make a commitment uh, to the tube line, as long as there was a firm commitment to development of Battersea Power Station by April 2013. Now, I hope I'm wrong about this, but on the past track record, we won't have sorted out the ownership by April 2013, let alone a firm commitment. Councillor Passmore was a strapping young lad when Battersea Power Station got it first got a planning permission. Ten years ago, ex-Councillor Khan said that I didn't have a grey hair on my head when it started. And now he's got more grey hairs on his head than I had on mine then. So what makes us think this is going to be so fantastically different? I don't actually think it is looking like a majority, you know, a, a majority possible. It doesn't look like an odds-on, let's use a gambling phrase. It doesn't look like an odds-on gamble to me. 
Now let's look at some of the housing. You can just, it's a bit like Gargoyle Wharf. Massive Gargoyle Wharf, St stacks of it. The people who live in this place will never ever go to mainstream Wandsworth in their lives. They'll go to Vauxhall Station, maybe Battersea Station if it's there, and off to the city or the West End or wherever it is. The only time any of those people will be going through Wandsworth will be when they're in a car to Heathrow or Ascot. That's the only time they'll ever be there. This development is not, clearly not, for people in housing need in this borough. Nor will it be a fundamental part of the community. Let's look at another element of it, and that's the jobs. Retail. Retail, we are told, is going to be bigger than Clapham Junction. Have you not opened any of your papers? The retail industry is going through the worst Christmas on record. They're all complaining. All the people, Councillor Hogg will tell me, everyone will be doing their shopping online anyway. So we're going to put somewhere the size of Clapham Junction um, down Nine Elms Lane and see them all shopping in this place when in fact they're going to be on their, on their PCs doing online shopping. I think there's a lot to be done yet, a lot. There is no vision. There never has been any vision in this council on this subject. Councillor Heaster said no, let the market reign 20 years ago. The only vision has been to do what the developers want. We have never, I suggested many years ago, that we put forward an international competition for what best to do about you, Nine Elms Lane. Council, oh no, Councillor Heaster Council said. Councillor Belton, you've really gone over. I, just the finishing line. Um, and Councillor Heaster said, leave it to the market. I'm afraid there's not a favourable economy. There's not any particular vision. I hope I'm wrong, but I'm much more sceptical than you are about the prospects of this coming into fruition in the next few months. Councillor Cousins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'll commend Councillor Belton on his speech. If there's one thing that uh, I've always been impressed with by Councillor Belton, uh, it's the amount of passion he can put into being absolutely, totally wrong. Uh, and I think if we could muster just 10% of that passion in being right, as we are on this side, uh, we would not be doing badly at all. Uh, Councillor Cuff started off by mentioning the strong vision, which very clearly does exist in Nine Elms. Uh, this is something that perhaps uh, has passed uh, Councillor Belton by. Uh, but we have the Opportunity Area Framework in place. Uh, we have worked with Lambeth, we've worked with the GLA, we've worked with a number of others uh, to come up with a strong, um, uh, strong dynamic vision for what Nine Elms is going to be. It is going to be a new quarter for London. It's making progress. As Councillor Cuff mentioned, we have 6,000 homes before the planning committee within the next six months or so. Uh, we're aiming towards 16,000 uh, homes, 25,000 businesses, uh, and we're making progress towards that target uh, every day uh, on site at River Light now. Uh, buildings are uh, starting to uh, uh, be prepared to be built there. Uh, applications are coming in, applications are being worked up, uh, and people are starting to think about what the future will hold for them. Only a, a few hours before this meeting, I had a business uh, approach me, a small service business that was established in Wandsworth uh, just a couple of years ago, now looking to start their expansion uh, and want to do it locally, want to have three or four uh, extra locations within the Wandsworth area. And their question was not, can you think of anywhere suitable? It was, how do we get involved in Nine Elms? That's where they wanted to be because they shared our vision, they shared our excitement. Um, and Councillor Belton focuses very strongly on Battersea Power Station in all his comments. Yes, the history of Battersea Power Station since the 1980s has perhaps been sad. It's perhaps been at times depressing and it's been unfortunate that it's taken so long to get here. But Nine Elms now is about far more than the power station. The power station is but a fraction of what will be uh, London's new quarter. This isn't just a difference between a glass half empty or a glass half full in interpretation. We are now looking at something that is uh, more, uh, stronger, more vibrant, uh, has more potential than perhaps we could ever have dreamed five, ten years ago or thirty years ago when the power station first closed. Uh, Councillor Belton mentioned Treasury. Well, yes, it's disappointing, and I don't think we should uh, prejudge what the result will be on the 12th uh, of December. Uh, but we've got to recognise as well that one of the things that had been holding the area back to a degree had been question marks over the finances of Treasury. That, at least, is, is coming to a head. But while that's happening, 
uh, we have other developments. We have the government support for the Northern Line. We know that this massive infrastructure project is necessary. It's essential to make Nine Elms work. And now it isn't just us talking about it. It's people, it's the government who have the clout to make it happen. We have other developments. We know the US Embassy is coming here. We know River Light is on site uh, and shovels are going into the ground. We know other planning applications are coming forward. We know that Nine Elms is not an area that is standing still. We know Nine Elms is an area that is making progress. And we know that the situation that we face today, however bad it may be with one individual developer, is totally different to the situation we have faced at any time in the past. It is now everything to be positive for, it is everything to be hopeful for. And I'd invite members, when they're thinking about Nine Elms, uh, not to focus on the incredibly grinding, miserable, depressing pessimism uh, that is offered by Councillor Belton, but in fact to think about the, the opportunity, uh, to be optimistic about the, uh, the dynamism that that area is going to bring to London, uh, what it's going to bring to Wandsworth and what it's going to bring to the country as a whole. Personally, I'm excited for Nine Elms. I wish Councillor Belson could share perhaps 10% of my excitement because then he would probably find life a lot more happier. Councillor Hogg. Thank you, Councillor Cousins. Councillor Hogg. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm glad the majority party uh, brought forward this debate because um, I think Nine Elms is both very, very important and incredibly exciting. And I think <clears throat> it's actually going to be the most important thing that most of us do as councillors. It will be what we're judged on, what we're remembered for. Um, this evening, I'd just like to talk about a sort of narrow but important point, which is who will live in Nine Elms. And first, I should say there's much we agree with, um, with the majority party's vision for Nine Elms, the Northern Line extension, the intensive mixed uses, the retention and renovation of Battersea Power Station, the quality architecture, bringing sustainability to the fore, and so on. And while some might want to turn North Battersea into South Chelsea, we hope that they'll agree that moving Stamford Bridge, Chelsea's football ground south of the river, is probably a bit too much. <laughs> There's a sting in the tail, Councillor Cuff. Um, buildings don't make a community, and I think Councillor Osborne will explain further on this. And my question to you is, what housing opportunities can Nine Elms give the existing residents of Wandsworth, our constituents? Wandsworth currently um, requires that developers provide 15% affordable housing in all new developments in Nine Elms because otherwise there's almost no way that the vast majority of our residents could benefit from that development. Now we could, if we wanted to, increase this to 40% in all new developments. Um, this would provide an extra 4,000 homes for local people to rent and to buy. Now, this isn't a crazy figure I've plucked out of the air. This is a properly costed alternative which has been presented by the consultants alongside the 15% that the council has chosen. And indeed, our partners in Lambeth have opted for the 40% choice in their sector of Nine Elms. This wouldn't necessarily affect the viability of schemes. It would, however, um, leave the fund towards the Northern Line extension about £20 million pounds worth off, worse off, which is a problem. But this is about 2% of the total infrastructure cost for Nine Elms, and that's why the council says it's rejected the 40% option. Yeah, that's right. 4,000 local people, people hoping to stay in the same area where they were born, maybe stay here to get a job, raise a family, are being junked for 2% contribution towards the infrastructure costs in Nine Elms. This is crazy, but it's true. These figures are back on page 199 of a council-sponsored infrastructure um, funding document. I, I won't read the whole thing, but put plainly, we could choose to require developers to build 6,500 affordable homes, 40% of the, the total, but we'd get 93% of the infrastructure costs. What the council has decided to do is get 95% of the infrastructure costs, but reduce the 6,500 homes down to 2,500. And most of us don't seem aware that this has been done on our behalf. The current proposals don't represent best value for Wandsworth Council taxpayers, and I urge you, not as members of political parties, but as councillors, just to look into it. You don't have to take my word for it. It's all out there. And anyway, £20 million for 4,000 affordable units is a fantastic 
cost of £5,000 per affordable home. Um, those who are looking for creative ways of using our potential HRA debt overhead to finance affordable homes for local people should look no further. Now, on the nearby Savona and Patmore estates and in Cary Gardens, I'm very keen to see a mixed community of working people alongside local families and older people. And I hope that those of you who are too will see the same necessity for an integrated community in Nine Elms. This is our last best chance to lift up local residents and move away from enclaves of great poverty and great wealth to work towards balanced communities in all parts of our borough. There's a choice to be made in Nine Elms. And I'd say as councillors, we're not only competent to consider this, it's our responsibility. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hawke.